Hello and welcome back to Advanced Animation Application. I'm Charlie and today we're going to be learning about Anim Notifies. So what is an Anim Notify? Why do we use them? And most importantly, how do we use them? Let's jump right in. First thing we're going to do is create a new blueprint class and we're going to search in all classes Anim Notify. Now there are two types of Anim Notify. There's the regular Anim Notify and the Anim Notify state. For the time being, we're going to select Anim Notify just because it's the simpler one. And I'm going to call this Test Anim Notify. All right, let's open this up. And you'll see there is absolutely nothing going on in here. But it isn't until we go up to Functions and click Override and we're going to hit Received Notify. Now this looks a bit more familiar. It looks like a function. So within these two nodes here, we're going to put some logic. Uh, for now, I'm just going to go print string and it's going to say a, 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 just lots of that, just so it comes up really obviously. <laughs> now, how do we implement an anim notify? Well, you're going to grab one of your animations. I'm going to find my unarmed run loop, which I have here. Now, as you can see, I've already got a few notifies in here, but we're just going to go track, uh, insert, notify track. And then in this empty track here, I'm going to go add notify and I'm going to search the one that we created just before. Test anim notify. Maybe we'll put this uh, whenever our legs cross over. And then we can also copy and paste anim notifies as well. And we'll do it here where our legs cross over again. So, if this is working, every time my character, yep, every time the legs of my character cross over, it's just going to print string up here. This proves that it is working, but it's also completely and utterly useless. So, what we're going to do, we're going to add some logic to it. We're back in the notify logic. We're going to keep the print string in here just to, you know, make sure that it gets to the end. For the logic, we don't want to be doing everything on the anim notify itself. We want it to be on the character. We just want to be using these notifies as notifiers. So a way that we can do that, here we have two guaranteed references. The reason these are guaranteed is because it's an anim notify and it has to be on an animation. And an animation requires both a skeletal mesh and the animation reference itself. So what we can do is get the skeletal mesh, get owner, and then from the owner, we could do, you know, spawn, blood, burst, omnidirectional. Uh, now this is a blueprint interface, and this is how you would most likely want to be doing this. But for the sake of this video, we are just going to cast to my CPP character. Um, now this isn't best practice whatsoever, but you might want to look into implementing blueprint interfaces. Essentially, you can do anything once you have this reference to the owner of the animation. So what do we want to do now that we have a reference to the character? If we go into this character, we're just going to go custom event. Uh, I'm going to call this random explosion. And from here, we're going to spawn an actor from class and it's going to be an explosion and the place we are going to spawn this at is the location of our actor bam so back in our test anim notify as the character we can call the random explosion event and we can just chuck that in bam 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 compile save Let's see if this all works. Yep. Fantastic. I think that looks beautiful. And then as I stop, it's all good. And so when and only when the character is running, it's going to be sending that notify into the character. If I was to instead walk instead of run, then the explosion isn't going to happen because I haven't implemented this notify on the walking animation, only the running animation. And so an extra little tip is when you have a blend space on the very left 
down the very bottom, there's a setting called Animation Notify Trigger Mode. And by default, this is set to highest weighted animation. So at this point, the highest weighted animation is idle. And then here it is walking. And then as we get to here, just as we tick over that halfway point, that's when running becomes the highest weighted animation. And if we go just down a bit further, walking would be the highest weighted animation. For example, if you wanted to play a footstep sound or spawn some particles as you run along, like I do here, you will have to implement it on both the walking and running animations. And while we're on the topic of footsteps and particles and sound effects and stuff, this is why we want the logic to be on the character, not on the notify itself. You can imagine that you'll probably want to use the same notify for every type of character. So. You know, maybe we want to put it on the humanoids walking animation. Uh, maybe we want to use it in a horse's walking, you know, running animations and stuff. Now, obviously a horse is going to make completely different sounds to a human. And so we don't actually want to be checking on the notify. Hey, is this a human or is it a horse? And is the human wearing metal boots? And what surface are they on? And all that kind of stuff. It's just going to be much, much easier and you're going to have all of the variables readily available on the character. And so that's why we're using an interface from the notify to the character that owns the mesh that the animation is being played on so that it can receive the message and then do with that message whatever it needs to. So lastly, but not leastly, there is another type of anim notify called an anim notify state. So if we click anim notify state and I'll call it test anim notify state, we go into here and at first glance, it's exactly like a regular anim notify. But if we look up on functions and we click override, there are actually three separate functions that we can override. So it has a beginning, print string begin, with lots of ends. And then let's override the end and we'll print string and we can say it's over. <laughs> and then on tick, maybe we'll say <laughs> get owner and we'll say cast a CPP character blueprint. And then off here, we're going to go random explosion. Hi highly advised to not do this, but I think it'll be funny. So let's go back to our animation and just see how this works. So we're back in our run loop. We're going to get rid of these test anim notifiers that we had before. And instead, we're going to go add notify state. And we're going to click test anim notify state. Now you'll see that this actually has a duration. So it's got a begin pin. It's got an end pin. And then all of this space in between is when our notify state is active. So every tick between the beginning and the end of this animation state will send out that tick event that we set up to do the explosion. So let's just see what that looks like and if it will crash my game. No. Okay, so you can see a lot of explosions are happening all at once. <laughs> let, me, let me turn my sound up as well. Are you ready? And you can also see up the top here, it's saying begin and it's over, over and over again. So we can now confirm that the beginning state is happening, the end state is happening, and also the during state is happening. Evidenced by the multitude of explosions that are happening within a small fraction of a second. So that's a quick little rundown of anim notifies and the anim notify state. Keep in mind that you should be using interfaces rather than casting, just because casting can be not as flexible as interfaces. But now you know the logic behind anim notifies and anim notify states and how to use them. So if you did learn something new today, make sure you hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe and ring the little bell for this channel so that you don't miss out on any future videos to do with animation, materials, devlogs, etc. If you especially like what we do here together on the channel, you can support us monetarily for as little as $1 per month on our Patreon, which is linked in the description. So I hope you're looking forward to more and more videos. And with that, 
I say goodbye. Goodbye.